Some of you have asked if I've quit Nerf. I think this will give you a pretty good answer to that question. Yeah guys, I got a huge package from Walker. And this as well. <laughs> hey, what's up good people? Welcome to episode 147 of Pwned! Is this Pwned thing still a thing? Well, I guess if I'm still sitting here, then it is. It is. You miss me, don't you? I know. And in this episode of Pwn, I'm gonna talk about my prophecy. Yep. It's a fidget spinner, guys. This is a fidget spinner by Worker. Worker has since made at least two fidget spinner designs, I kid you not. So where have I been? Basically, I have got bored of Nerf. And the reason why I got bored of Nerf is not because I got sick of the hobby. I still love Nerf. It's just that there's nothing new and interesting being released in the market ever since my previous video, like six months ago. But to be honest with you, the last video I made six months ago was about a modification that I made. It wasn't even about a new product. You get what I'm trying to say? So you guys know it has been a lot of lackluster like, releases by Hasbro, by Boomco. Yes, I'm even saying Boomco. I know a lot of people have been raging about the new releases where Boomco is actually firing darts now, but it's nothing interesting to me. It's a personal thing, it's a personal thing. It's just not interesting to me. And there has been like a plethora of 3D printed kits out there in the market for blasters and I know that there has been a lot, a lot, a lot of improvements to electronic blasters but you guys know I'm not really a huge fan of flywheel blasters. Yes, I've done my fair share of mods on those and those I really like. There's still a few blasters that I have that are WIP and yes, that guy is still sitting there in the corner. I haven't even touched him since it should be a year now. It's been there. It's working. But it's been there. But yeah, since then, nothing has really piqued my interest until the prophecy arrived. And this prophecy right here is a gift from Worker to me because, yeah, you guys already heard, I helped to name it. So here's why I suggested the name prophecy for this. Back then, there were some talks between myself, Newbie, and Worker about making a shell for a blaster. And, uh, well, nothing really came out of it. But I can't really say that nothing really came out of it. I should say that there wasn't any closure about the conversation on my end. And out of the blue, Newbie showed me some pictures, which was this, and I think that the first pictures that were released online were by Orange Mod Works Singapore. Yes, shout out to Terry. And uh, I think a lot of people went crazy, and Worker approached Newbie and asked if he could come up with a name for it. And so the task was given to me, and I said, you know what? It's been a long time, and we've always been telling we, as in like, as a collective, I think, I don't know why I said we, but I said we anyway. So I said, we've been telling people, stay tuned. We've been telling people to look out because there are some other companies out there that makes reshells and they think they're the best and they think they're the shit. And actually the shells are shit. So as a warning to everyone, the legend has arrived and this is the prophecy. You know what I'm trying to say? So it was kind of like in those lines and that in that direction where I was going for. And I thought, hey, you know what? The prophecy is quite cool. But I said prophecy type R. And the reason why I said type R is because recon, retaliator, R. So I thought it was pretty cool because this actually uses, you guys already know, the Yokio kit. So the prophecy itself actually is just this part, which is the main blaster body. And I don't know if this is considered part of it, but I'm really glad that when Worker decided to release the blue version, they released all the accessories for it as well, all matching in color and it's beautiful, just beautiful. Now there are another two variations in color. One is in clear, transparent, well, frosted transparent, and the other one is in a smoke black kind of color. And you know, I don't know how clear that is. You guys have to check out Miktas Battle's video on it. But from my recollection, the smoke colored or the translucent black version of the Yokio kit wasn't all that translucent. It was kind of like still pretty opaque. So I don't know if there was any changes to the color on that because I've never seen it in person. So once again, if you guys are interested and you want to see all three color variations, go check out Miktas Battle's video. So when Worker chose the name, I was like, okay, cool. You guys chose the name and this is a pretty authoritative name. I would say that it is a name that is, you know, kind of, fierce you know what i mean like would the blaster actually live up to his name and so initially worker and newbie they were looking for people to review it and i said you know i haven't been doing videos in a long time but if anyone were to deserve reviewing these it would be make test battle and i think that they did a wonderful job because they weren't just sent one they were sent three and unfortunately ryan wasn't in it at the time i think he was in the states but justin and adrian killed it in my opinion so after finding out that worker was really going to send it to them i was really excited and i just waited and bated breath Waited with bated breath. That's how it's supposed to be said. Waited with bated breath for Justin to finish up 
the editing and then uploading the video and when it was out I went all bonkers and I watched it and I really really enjoyed it and that was the video that made me want a prophecy for myself you know just seeing pictures online and just people talking about it it's kind of hard to judge but after seeing that video I felt that oh my goodness I really want to own one and then I approached newbie and I said hey I'm gonna get rid of the retaliators or the recons that I don't need and all I need is just a prophecy because the prophecy is good enough to be an expanded plunge tube retaliator that should be the be all and all of retaliators or retaliacons for me expanded plunge tube wise then newbie replied and said well we got something special coming your way and i was like cool so this arrived as a token of appreciation from worker to thank me for helping to name this this one of course they gave to me quite some time ago yes they said this one to me as well this is the metal muzzle which is super awesome super fierce and uh well i did some modifications to it but here's the coolest thing you guys don't know this is actually the rarest i would dare say it's the rarest it should be i've never seen anyone else with this variation of the prophecy and the reason why it is so rare is because look at this guys it's got their signatures on it what look at that it's signed by justin uncle mo and rabi is it rabi or rabi i don't know i think it's rabi but these are the people behind Worker. And I didn't even realize that mine had this cool signature. I did not even realize until, you know, Newbie said that there was something special on it. And I was like, oh, okay. So I took a picture of this and I sent it over to Make Test Battle. And I said, hey, do your guys' prophecies have this? And they were like, no, but that looks really cool. So I'm like, yes, oh yes. So I've got mine autographed by them. And it looks like it's printed on. It doesn't look like it's signed. So it's really cool, actually. And I'm really happy with this because it's in the perfect matching colors. I got these. LaRue indexing rail clips in orange to match the trigger over here. And the internal system, well, I didn't use Worker's internal system. You guys already saw at the start of the video, I showed you everything that Worker sent to me. So big shout out to Worker for sending all of this to me because I, I don't think I really deserve that much for naming your blaster, but uh, it's very much appreciated. This is something that I really wanted. And then I did work another favor and I attached that fidget spinner onto the stock attachment, which is Something that I enjoy nowadays. Anyway, I won't talk about fidget spinners on this channel because this is all nerf. But you guys know that I love my fidget spinners, right? You guys know I've amassed quite a fortune of fidget spinners. Yeah. <laughs> so if you guys are wondering what the internals are, basically these are the internals that I transplanted from my other expanded plunger tube retaliator put in here. So where's the worker's internals then? It is in the other shell, obviously. Well, it's kind of like a combination. I'm using the worker expanded plunger tube in here so that means it's just the breech and the bolt slat that was transplanted over from the other retaliator and the reason why is because this breech is kind of hard for me to come by uh, it's not easy to get the metal orange mod works recon breech which actually you know lets you use brass and so i've done a little talk through about the internals because there's quite a lot of modifications that you have to do to the internals in order to make sure it works in the prophecy shell now the thing is it's because i'm using roboman's bolt slat if you are using say for example artifacts metal bolt slat then you wouldn't be having the same problem as I did. And you'll understand why after you watch this part. So check it out. This is the Roboman sled and you can see that it is chopped off. I actually cut this much off the back of the bolt sled. So it's a little tail and yeah, it's like that because I initially thought I would just round it off, but I guess it didn't work. So what was happening is that the Roboman sled would actually hit the catch plate right here and prevent it from moving back. I'm going to move the trigger away because it's, well, getting in the way right now. But yeah, as I was saying, if you had that little tail on the back of the bolt sled, then when you prime it, you notice how close it is? Well, you'd be blocking yourself. See that guys? Just, yeah, it just totally gets in the way. It'll be touching against this catch plate completely and then it would just stop at about this point. So you would never be able to prime it and at the same time you wouldn't even be able to open up the breech far enough for you to let a dart go up and I'm talking about full length darts so there's no way that you could feed it in properly. And at the same time trial and error also taught me something else. Now one of the first things that I actually thought about was trying to I guess fill up this cavity here on the plunger head. And well, you can see that I have some hot glue that I actually filled it up with. And so when I realized that the problem was actually the back of the bolt sled, I cut that off and then I realized that having this cavity filled up would mean that yes, I would be able to prime it 
no problem. But then it would also mean that I would not be able to open my breech up fully. So just make sure that if you're using the Roboman bolt sled, just cut the tail off. You're going to cut it to almost flush this part over here and then don't fill this up at all. So I really wanted to point that out to you guys in case any of you are intending to use the Roboman bolt sled. And yes, this is the same breech that I transplanted over from my older expanded plunger tube retaliator. So got this brass tubing inside and everything you guys know you've seen that before so that's what i wanted to point out to you guys and hopefully this information helps you out if you are looking to do the same mod as i am to the prophecy shelf welcome back so now you understand my pain that was the things that i have to go through now the artifact bolt sled doesn't have the same issue as the roboman bolt sled which is well, I should have done that later, but the reason why I couldn't swap out this Roboman bolt sled for another bolt sled is because I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot sandwich. See, Roboman's bolt sleds actually have a hex screw or a hex nut that actually goes all the way through. And if you are familiar with it, basically you have to kind of drill a little hole through the top nub of your breaching system, right? Your dart pusher, whatever you want to call that part. And I didn't do that. I just tightened it all the way. And once I got it all the way to the end, I realized that I actually broke the head off. So yes, it's permanently stuck in there. Look permanently stuck in there like an idiot. So now there's no way for me to take this out unless I bring it over to a workshop, use a drill press and drill the whole damn thing out, which might accidentally ruin the breach itself. So I don't want to do that because I spent so much time with this breach. So I was like, you know what? I'll just do what I can with this, you know? So if you guys are going to do the same mod as I am, please make sure that you don't make the same mistakes that I did, okay? So the main reason why I'm using this breach is because I want the ability to fire off both streamlined length darts and Stefan length darts. You guys already know I don't like Stefan only firing systems. So since we're talking about that, let's go ahead and give you guys a firing demonstration. First, we are going to fire off six Stefan darts. I have no idea what darts these are. The orange body with this little pink nipple tip thing. I don't know, just silicone tips. Right here, you guys can see. So there are six darts in here. Six, yeah, six. I got some problem counting nowadays, guys. So here we go, I'm gonna fire all six out into the corner and we'll probably see the darts fly back and possibly hit my face. I hope that doesn't happen. But here we go. That was a nice sound. Figured I might as well show you guys. I forgot how I'm gonna get the angle in, but maybe you could see from this angle. That's how basically it chambers a dart. See that? Okay. Guys, darts are flying everywhere. Dart parts or dart bits. Here we go. So, third dart. Oh, didn't, didn't chamber well this time. Let's check this out. What's going on? Third dart. Oh, it got crushed. It got eaten. It got chewed up. Guess I'll get rid of this third dart then. Yep, this one's good. I'm really, really endangering myself, guys. Oh! Last dart, okay, here we go. Oh, that almost hit my face. And uh, the reason why the darts are firing so hard is because I'm actually using the powerful spring. You know that long, long spring that came with it? Yeah, I didn't put a spacer like Maytex Battle did, but this is powerful enough. Now with the fidget spinner here, you can basically just fidget away when you're bored and when you change mags like that. See? Now we have some streamlines in this and I think I'll just fire about six because you know, you obviously could see that it's really powerful. So here we go. Six all out and the reason why I have to kind of ram it back is because I want to make sure that the darts actually feed properly. Now I realized that if I were to prime it back slowly sometimes the back part of the dart actually gets stuck behind so if I were to jam it back all the way it'll kind of shake the dart to push it up a little bit and that really really works like, like this you see. Yeah guys, that's more than six darts. So clearly the Stefans that I used were a little bit too fat for the main barrel, but that's fine. Just wanted to show you guys the compatibility. So no problems there, I could fire off both Stefans and streamline length darts and that was exactly what I wanted to go for. And with that, we have come to the end of this episode of Pwned. Do I like the prophecy? Yes, I do. I do like it very, very much. <laughs> and I'm gonna be honest with you guys, attaching the fidget spinner here is just for this video only. Right after I'm done recording, I'm gonna take it right out, okay? Just, I just wanted to put it here because I thought it was fun. But it does look kind of cool, doesn't it? Like, I mean, yeah, if it appeals to you. <laughs> so, 
Everyone, this is my Prophecy Type R. I'm really happy with it right now. The way I've done it, the way I've modded it, it packs a huge punch and I could push it even further by adding a spacer here so I could maximize the compression of the spring. Now I might have to look for some kind of a lower profile kind of a scar barrel that I could add to the front to help to guide the darts and make the accuracy a bit better because right now uh, it's so powerful that the darts are all just fishtailing here and there, especially when I'm firing streamlined darts. In terms of Stefans, it really depends on the kind of Stefans that I'm using. I'm trying to find some Stefans that are slightly narrower in terms of the body. This way it would feed into the barrel and the breech system a lot better. But yeah, the reason why I did this is because, well, I'm getting a really good seal out of this breech system that I made and I didn't want it to go to waste. I wanted this to really be my prophecy and if ever I go to a war again, I could just bring this out and not worry about anything else. I could just have a pretty solid, well-performing retaliator with an expanded plunger tube ready to go for war and it looks awesome the way it is. Look, orange and blue all the way around. This is just awesome and you know, with a little bit of red here and a little bit of red here, the accents kind of match and I've got my own sticker in here and I've got the autographs by worker team themselves. Nothing more that I can ask for. So guys, that's it. This is the end of the video. Thank you so much for sticking all the way throughout and I hope that you enjoyed this video. It's been a while. It's been a while that I've made a Nerf related video and surprisingly, it doesn't feel strange for me to sit down in front of this camera and speak to you guys like that. It just feels like I never stopped and that's because I never stopped. I never stopped Nerf. I know that some of you have hit me up on my personal Facebook account. Some of you have followed me on my other channel which is The Average Singaporean and you have left me comments and left me private messages asking me to come back and make more Nerf videos and I think that I've already answered you guys as to the reason why I haven't been here and active on this channel is because finally after so long something that has piqued my interest has come along. So I never left guys. Uh, I still enjoy Nerf. I still love it. If not, I wouldn't even be making this video in the first place. But thank you so much for, you know, supporting me I guess and waiting all this time for me and you guys already know on my other channel it's been you know a roller coaster ride it's started from a vlog channel and now it's like almost full-on fidget spinner review videos and I do enjoy fidget spinners I really do I've amassed a huge collection and uh, I don't think I'll be stopping anytime soon because I think that it is something that I really enjoy like talking about a lot of things you know different from the nerf world that I'm actually learning about and that really keeps me interested you know what I mean but I have to be honest and say that the fidget spinner craze is dying. So now only the true enthusiasts are left in the, I guess, the community around the world. I really enjoy just putting out content, you know, like content that interests me. You know what I'm trying to say? Like as a way for me to have some creative output somewhere. You know what I mean? So that's just, that's just me guys. But thank you so much for believing in me. Thank you so much for your support, your endless support. With all of that said, I wouldn't even bother to ask you guys to subscribe to me because those of you who are watching this video probably are subscribed to me already. So. Thank you. I guess the outputs here are gonna be so erratic that it's not fair for me to ask for people to subscribe. So yeah, unless you wanna stay notified, you know what I mean? So really it's just up to you. But I will say that I will have another video coming along. Yeah, I know, I actually was supposed to make a video about me visiting Orange Modworks. I guess that's now kind of almost a year overdue, but I think I'll still just put it out anyway, you know what I mean? But I do have something that I wanna share with you guys and it's right here next to me that I won't show. I think you guys already seen it on Facebook because I posted some pictures. But yes, stay tuned for that as well. I don't know when that video will be out, but hopefully it wouldn't take too long. You know, I just got to get my creative juices going again. The prophecy was with me for a long, long time and I didn't make a video because I didn't feel very inspired to do one until I found out about this. And I really wanted to show this off and I really wanted to make this video as a token of appreciation back to worker. I know that they've given me this prophecy as a token of appreciation for me giving it the name, but I guess this video is a token of appreciation back to them for making this a little bit more special. You guys already know what I'm gonna say at this point of time. I'll catch y'all in the next episode, everyone. Drills pay the bills and teamwork makes the dream work. Peace. <laughs>